Maybe start putting tomatoes on your In-N-Out burgers. In-N-Out Burger was founded way back in 1948 in Baldwin Park, California. It marked the very first drive through restaurant in that state. But as popular as it is, it isn't very likely that you'll be seeing one of these locations pop up near you. And we've got some pretty interesting reasons as to why. Here are the 10 sad truths why In-N-Out isn't coming to a city near you. In-N-Out burger out of the wrapper on a plate. The In-N-Out menu may be too simple. You're right, it's so simple. With a plethora of restaurants offering countless items on their menus, perhaps one of the biggest issues with In-N-Out is the size of their tiny menu. Definitely quaint, this menu offers very little in terms of change, rarely venturing away from the classic menu they have always offered since their inception. A few items were added over the years, like the lemonade and the hot cocoa, but these items appeared only every so often and with a lot of years in between. Once in a while, that that's it. The reason for this is quite simple to get to, as the owners of the past and the current owners and administration are all about keeping this restaurant quaint and homey. Of course, also added to this are the many standards they have, and we all know that the less you have to do, the better you can uphold your standards of operation and service. This tiny menu might be a definite drawback to many diners and possible consumers out there, as a wide variety of choice is a huge selling point for many restaurants like this. The In-N-Out family seems to recognize this, thus the decision to refrain from serious global expansion. Standards are quite high at In-N-Out. There's nothing wrong with having high standards. As we touched on earlier, it's the standards that seem to make expansion quite difficult. With too many locations to oversee, these standards can suffer quite severely. And it's this reason specifically why you won't be seeing many In-N-Out locations opening up near you. You are likely to see 50 more McDonald's locations before seeing a single In-N-Out. Can you please lower your standards a tiny bit? As the standards at McDonald's are considerably lower, as is to be expected of such a huge chain. With so many locations under their corporation, it's hard to keep an eye on everything. But here, with In-N-Out, the smaller the reach, the better it is to manage appropriately. In-N-Out doesn't have health Healthy options. I need to eat something healthy like a salad or something. They don't really offer much in terms of healthy food options. Even McDonald's offers some healthy options on their vast menu, like their grilled chicken and fruit smoothies. These products do well, especially for locations set up near gyms and other athletic, business-oriented places. Also, healthy food is quite popular in general these days. With everyone counting macros and calories, this is to be expected. But if health health buffs such as this decide to go to In-N-Out, it better be a cheat day altogether because they won't be able to stay on the old diet there. I guess today's gonna be my cheat day. The menu hasn't changed much over the years, as we've said, and the regular burgers and fries are pretty much all that you can expect to find there. This too is a reason not to expand that far out of their range, as they cannot cater to the health buffs out there. In-N-Out is more of a place to treat yourself, and the fewer locations there are, the better. And there's a certain appeal to that. In-N-Out staff is paid really well. Are you hiring? This sure isn't a negative thing, as who doesn't want to be paid well? This is obviously a rhetorical question, as everybody wants to be paid well, duh. The reason that In-N-Out pays their employees so well is quite simple. Each employee in the restaurant brigade has a specific task that they are required to learn in training. And after said training, they apply what they've learned specifically to their given positions, ranks, and job title, rarely wavering away from their position. This enables them to work effectively as a team and as a machine. This place is a well-oiled machine, my friend as a kitchen brigade should. Does this mean that their service is better than the next place? Probably so, as they essentially become specialists of their own domain. And it doesn't stop at the pay. The salary is just the tip of the iceberg, as they are all taken care of quite well in terms of health packages and other benefits. And that goes from the fry cook all the way up the corporate ladder. So as it turns out, it's a pretty decent place to work if you so choose to enter the food industry. But one other question remains in terms terms of this point, do you think they'd be able to afford to take care of their employees as well as they do if they had as many locations as McDonald's? We didn't think so. In-N-Out Supply Delivery 
we will deliver them. This, too, can be attributed to why you don't see that many locations around the states, as it makes a lot of sense. Everything in their restaurants is made fresh and daily, like the buns are baked fresh and are prepared to satisfy one and all. This is, of course, a great thing, as clients can expect to have the best bang for their buck, so to speak. And trust us when we say that these burgers do create quite the explosive bang when eaten. The ingredients and items of food preparation are actually made daily at distribution centers set up near the locations. But this is where the trick is. They can't be further than 500 miles from the particular restaurant or restaurants they cater to, as the deliveries must arrive fresh and ready to serve. Fresh, fresh. So with that said, can you imagine how many distribution centers there would have to be if the company would expand and set up locations on every street corner, like so many other fast food chains? It would be pandemonium. And of course, their precious standards would no doubt plummet. They seem to have really thought about everything, haven't they? in and out holds the expansion. Imagine it expanding to the point of critical mass. Lindsay Snyder, the current president of in and out hasn't tried to deter the minimalist approach set up by her ancestors and founding members of the company. She isn't at all hiding the fact that they will not expand to incredible lengths and levels of approach. A little at a time seems to be their corporate policy, and it seems to be working quite well for them, especially seeing that they made an approximate $600 million in 2017. Wow, that's a lot of money or thereabouts. So no, they aren't suffering in terms of profits, we'd say. What's the old expression? Slow and steady wins the race, right? It seems that this company lives by that policy. Snyder recently stated that she doesn't think that In-N-Out will be expanding further than East Texas anytime soon, and that's a serious statement that proves our point beautifully. Just think of how many Subway, KFC, and McDonald's locations will open in that time. And and probably even close. A minimalist approach indeed. Being exclusive has appeal. How exclusive are we talking? Super exclusive? Like a rare gemstone or a rare piece of art, being exclusive sure has its appeal. One-of-a-kind art can sell for millions, and in and out sure isn't the cheapest place to get a burger if you're so lucky to have one in and around where you live. But yet, people still flock to the locations like they're going out of business. And never mind style. This is because people in general understand when something is good and, of course, a bit rare. We're leaving this up to conjecture here, but please humor us. If something is too commonplace, readily available, and offered, as we said before, at every street corner in the center of many towns across America, then it wouldn't be as sought after. It's called taking things for granted. Hey, don't take anything for granted. It's human nature, friends, and it's been happening since the dawn of time. We take our sources, natural and non, and our products way too lightly. What follows is waste over waste, and of course, the dropping of sales for many companies that provide these resources and, of course, products. The corporate policy set up by the good people at in and out prevents this from ever happening. So next time you find yourself raising your fist to the sky and screaming that you haven't had an in and out burger in ages and can't afford a trip to where you can get your fix, remember that they approach their business and reach with a keen and sage mind. You've got to hand it to them, folks. in and out plays it close to the chest. I'm here because you live so close to in and out And yet another big reason as to why you don't see so many of these out there is that they will never sell franchises to the general public, meaning that they will never go public. Places like McDonald's offer out franchises, where business people can go out there and purchase a location and work within the parameters of the McDonald's corporation to some degree and earn profits off of the name and the product. But this lowers standards considerably, as many business people have been known to cut corners every now and again. With so many franchise locations, salaries differ from place to place, and of course the end result being the food differs from place to place. How 
many times have you gone to one McDonald's location and had a Big Mac, only to see that the middle piece of bread was missing? A travesty, indeed, but it happens. And why does this happen? Because of a lack of standards. One owner cannot be like the next, and this reflects badly on the McDonald's corporation as a whole. Things such as this wouldn't happen with In-N-Out, as they have set up the standard at which they apply their business and service and can keep an eye on all products and service at every single location. Not many fast food chains can claim this or even promise this. Too much competition. I have no competition. And with the mention of all these other franchises out there, the next reason why you won't see very many in and outs lies in that point as well. There is just so much competition out there, and not just in the fast food domain alone. These days, most restaurants are fast food oriented, and you as a consumer can pretty much get your burgers and fries just about anywhere. And although the standards of in and out are so high, the fact that you have a wide range of options can hurt a place in the long run, even with a place where the quality is so high. At the end of the day, the price of a certain product speaks volumes, especially in this fast-paced time and place in our economy and our society. The cheapest burger probably speaks volumes to the average consumer, and yes, quality starts to climb down the so-called ladder on our list of priorities. Perhaps the people at In-N-Out see this and understand it quite well. If they were to open up locations near other places like McDonald's, KFC, and even Burger King, perhaps they would do well for a time, but the average consumer that hits the line at the local fast food joint, let's say four times a week, there is no way they'll be going to in and out as often as they can go to McDonald's, with the famed McValue menu at the back of their minds. Grand openings are too big of a deal. This is a huge deal! When it comes to the old grand opening, nobody does it bigger than In-N-Out. The president herself comes out and they have to call in star employees to get the new employees trained and make sure that all openings go off without a hitch. This means flying in employees from other locations, which obviously costs money. Plane tickets aren't free, right? No sir, they absolutely aren't. And what's more, they need security and police present to direct traffic in the takeout lines and monitors indoors to make sure everything goes smoothly. If you don't believe this, try to imagine an in and out location opening near you. It's gonna be epic. <laughs> the logistics involved in making an opening like this go off without a hitch takes careful planning, and the people at in and out definitely know what they're doing in that regard. But this can't happen every other weekend. In fact, this can't even happen every other year. It takes a lot of money and planning, and after everything we've just uncovered, it seems like in and out themselves have no intentions to change their minimalistic approach anyways. It's been working nicely for them, and all the more power to them. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have a plane to catch. Seems as though we can't seem to get over a craving for a double-double. Want to join us? You're more than welcome. Hmm. This is a tasty burger. Take another bite out of one of our other great videos and tap that screen. And if it's your first time here, show us some love and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.